Hello everyone, and welcome to part three. So far in this series of fights, we have gone through seasons one through 15, and today we're finishing off the journey. Although Modern Big Brother has this stigma surrounding it about how there are no good fights, you might be surprised at how many great arguments there actually are. If you're watching this, chances are you've already seen the first two parts, so I'm not gonna waste any more of your time. Consider subscribing if you aren't already, it only takes a second to check, and without further ado, here are the best fights from Modern Big Brother. Manifest the truth, bro! Okay, Nick, that's a lie. I gotta be honest, that's- Oh my god, no it's not, bro! Kicking things off with the first HD season, Big Brother 16, we get the veto meeting blow up that happened in week two. Devin, the HOH and veto holder, had pretty much ruined his entire game throughout the week due to his chaotic and hectic gameplay, and his last order of business was using the veto to save his primary target, Brittany, and replacing her with his ally, Zach. Devin had also promised Paola that he'd use the veto on her, meaning that Devin had broken his word to both players on the block now, and usually, that doesn't go over well. The two nominees took turns tearing Devin to shreds, and it is one of the most exhilarating veto meetings of all time. So today, I'm going to use the power of veto on you, Brittany. So Zach, gotta put you up on the uh, blog, brother. Can I say something really fast? I'll be next, too. I'm sorry, but you're not a good person. I would rather throw my head on the toilet bowl and drown than stay with you another week. You're right. I had a change of heart. That's why I stayed up in the room the last couple days. You did not even No, no, hold up. Time out, time out. No, no, no. This is after the... No. <laughs> All right, my turn. I might have to blow up some other people's game. Pal, you suck at everything, straight up. It's no big deal. It's true. Devin, there's not an ounce of truth in your body. I'm going after you. Everyone in this house should be going after you too. Yep, cool with me. Devin, your personality changes with the blow of the wind. All he does is smile with his fake smile. Now I'm just like ranting on about how much I hate Devin. Perfect, dude. So what's your response to that? Uh, best of luck to you, bud. All right, touche. As good of a season as Big Brother 17 was, the fight department was a little lacking. However, I think we can still scrounge up a little something. In week 6, James had made a deal with Shelly and Clay to keep them safe if they gave him the HOH, but after James won it, he went back on his word and nominated both of them, so tensions were already high. After a little bit of he said, she said involving Vanessa and Johnny Mac, James and Clay got into a small confrontation that quickly heated up once Clay got in James's face. It wasn't the most crazy fight, especially compared to everything we've seen beforehand, but it was a little something. Because I feel like Vanessa is in Shelly's head. I would talk to Johnny Mac because James is telling him that you're in Shelly's head. Do you have something against me personally? No. Okay, but then why would you go tell Johnny Mac that I'm in Shelly's head? I didn't, I swear. We need to get down to the bottom, Mac, because I would like to confront that person. Well, Clay told me that. Clay, I don't know how much time you got left in this house, but I advise you to keep my name out of your mouth. Shut up. You shut up. Gotta hear what you talking about. Because unlike you, I'm ready to go. Oh, really? Yeah, really. How about that? Yeah. Walk away from me, dude. Well, you gonna hit me or something? Don't Clay? Clay? No, no, don't come to me again like that. I'm telling you right now. You get out of my face, Clay. Don't come to me like that again. You think I'm lying? You guys out the door next week. I don't care. All this freaking lying that you've been doing. You're right. I, I've been lying. Yeah. Putting my name in people's mouths. And I got time for you. Big Brother 18 brings us the only fight that we'll talk about that didn't actually happen in the Big Brother house. Instead, it took place in the jury house. Devon and Polly had been living in the jury house for weeks together, and you could tell that there was a lot of tension between the two. The jurors were sitting down and watching Natalie's eviction tape when some of the women made a couple digging jokes at Polly's expense about his relationship with Zakia, so Polly felt the need to defend himself. All of the passive aggressiveness turned ugly really quick as Polly and Devon started to get at it, and they were all up in each other's faces. We were already eating good at this point, but then Polly had to go and mention Devon's daughter, which was clearly a step to too far for Devon. She began throwing everything at Polly now, as well as a little bit towards Zakia, so much so that a member of production actually had to step into the situation to try and calm Day down. The raw emotion that was displayed in this fight is rarely ever seen on Big Brother, and when you combine that with the fact that this is one of the only instances in the history of the show where we actually see a crew member step in, I had to put it on the list. To be honest with you guys, I would have used the veto on James too, and no one believes it. Something like that Polly didn't do. Yes! Do I not have her back in this house? You two passive aggressive girls? Polly, you gotta be at least six feet to talk to me. Shut the hell oh, up. That's it? Polly, you are an arrogant. 
And no. I do know that you only no, talk no. down to women. I ain't heard no. you fuck up to a man yet. No. Don't Avon, ever get it twisted. I will get it twisted don't because you are Excuse me, Bridget. Don't ever actually, get it twisted. You're actually you can punk her ass, but okay. you don't punk me. I ain't punk as a no kid. Bad, bad. What kind of example Run you set for your Run baby girl? Don't break yeah. up my daughter, you oh, 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 Don't break up my daughter. I love it. Don't break up my daughter. I already did. Punk ass bitch. Polly, you disgust me. You disgust yourself. She right, you are a bitch. Her too, cause she ain't got my back either. You supposed to be my friend. You're supposed to be friend. You know what you want to do with me? God, you make my skin boil. Let me just say that Big Brother 19 had a cast filled to the brim with chaotic players looking for a fight. There are about 35 arguments that I could choose from, and while there are absolutely some all-time crazy fights in this season, I don't care. I'm choosing the eight ball fight between Mark and Josh. The two boys were playing pool and made a little bet that the loser had to drink a gross concoction of pickle juice and hot sauce. Josh was lined up to take the winning shot, but he hit the cue ball twice, which is a scratch and results in Josh losing the game. However, Josh denied that he scratched over and over again, so it looked like Mark finally obliged and went over to drink the juice. But instead of drinking it, he threw it in Josh's face. Josh then retaliated by grabbing a bunch of condiments and throwing them back in Mark's direction, and what started as a simple game of pool became this super serious shouting match. This went on for a long time and eventually led to another argument where Josh went at it with Mark and then Jessica too for some reason. At the end of the day, I chose this fight because it started for the most ridiculous reason, and I love it. Okay, so loser, Chugs that full thing of pickle juice and half of the cup of hot sauce. No, that's a scratch. You just double hit the ball. Redo double it. The ball. Redo it. How do you redo that? Redo it. You just scratch on the eight ball. I won that game. Eat your pickle juice, fool. Get the f out of here. You did not win that game. I just won that game. You say you beat me, so I'll drink it right out here. Good sportsmanship. I like it. This is gonna be so funny. Did you beat me that game? Yes. So you just throw. Okay. That's a coward. <laughs> you should have drank it. I no, I'm not playing with you. That's why I don't talk to you because you can't take it. So if it's a fair game, let it be a game, but don't cross the line. I bring you your word as a man. So you still think you won the game? Fool, you scratch on the ball. You Now let's talk about how you say you're a man over your word and you're loyal. Yet you were plotting against Paul to get him out. I was plotting to get rid of Paul. No, no, no. How about your loyalty and your word as a man? You want to air something? Let's do it, baby. It's game on. So I lost all respect for you. Okay. I have so much love and respect for you. No, no, you don't. You said you had no respect for me, I Josh. Do. No, 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 no. You did up. Does anybody else have something to say? Because I got all day. So what did you say upstairs in the HOH room about Christmas? Yeah. What did you say, Josh? Remind me and I'll clarify if I said it because I, mean, I don't I'm have nothing to hide. Yeah, I lied to I your ass said and said I was going to because I don't owe you. You did lie to me. Forgive me, because I'm a compulsive liar. Oh my god, Josh. For Big Brother 20, I know that the obvious answer is Rockstar's daughter's birthday, but that's really just Rockstar yelling at a mostly silent Brett. I still love it though, so I'll include it at the end of the video. The choice that I am going with instead is one I consider an actual fight, that being Bailey versus Tyler. It was week six, and Bailey had just been put on the block due to having a power app, as well as the house believing that she was the hacker, which was some twist thrown in for the week. There have been some friction between her and Tyler because Tyler believed that Bailey put him up using her hacker powers, but she wasn't the hacker. Haley was. Eventually, the guilt got to Haley that her friend was taking the brunt of the blame for a move that she made, so Haley called a house meeting where she admitted to being the hacker and she asked everyone to apologize to Bailey. However, things didn't work out like that. Haley called Tyler out during the meeting as well, which led to a back and forth between Bailey and Tyler in a situation where I genuinely believe they both thought they were telling the truth. But because of that, they were that much more incentivized to stick to their guns. So they argued. And argued. And argued. Eventually things got way out of hand to the point where Bailey began bleeding from the mouth and screaming at the top of her lungs at Tyler. It was definitely the most intense fight of the season and I think it can be up there as an all-timer. Okay. There are several people here that owe Bailey an apology because last Thursday I won the hacker competition. 
I'd also like to add that last week, Tyler came to Bailey and asked that Angela be backdoored. <laughs> that is hilarious, dude. Is no, it? that's true, Hilarious. Tyler. Literally. I said, would Angela be the replacement? You said yes. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Did I attack you? Did I throw you under the bus? Dude, it's irrelevant. And you can't even be a man and apologize to me right now. It's irrelevant no, if it's you're not. the hacker. Did I throw you under the bus? Yes, you just did in front of everybody. You wanted to vote me out. Well, congrats. I'm still voting shut you out. Up. You have a power. Just shut up. You're screaming at me, and she's the one that did this to you. I never were threw Angela Were you not Angela there when out. you were literally at the counter? Such a child, you could have just said sorry and it would have been over. I'm not apologizing to you, Bailey. After I did nothing to nobody and everybody has been treating me like trash, you still can't apologize? That's not fair. I got a power because Swaggy got backdoored and I was left in this house by myself. I understand. Like, are you kidding me? Bailey, you are taking it way too you far. You are terrible. You've made my life in this house to hell. You I Anything to you, Bailey. How did that get so far? Big Brother 21 has a lot of things going against it, but one thing it deserves its flowers for are the fights. Day 44 and Taco Tuesday alone are some of the best, and to be honest, I'll probably include some of those clips at the end. But in terms of raw intensity and emotion, I have to go with the final five fight between Jackson and Tommy. Holly and Tommy were nominated for eviction, and it seemed like Cliff and Nicole were wavering on their deal with Jackson and were considering voting out Holly. So Jackson made a pretty ingenious bluff to try and pin the target back on Tommy and it all came to a head in the kitchen just hours before the eviction. The two were fighting for their lives in the game, or in Jackson's case, Holly's life. So this argument was very important as Cliff and Nicole were watching and they were the only two votes. Jackson was lying through his teeth the whole time and Tommy knew it, which erupted this very genuine and powerful reaction from him as he pleaded for Cliff and Nicole to not believe the lies. It's so rare to see anything fun happened at the final five. So because of that, as well as all the raw emotion that Tommy exuded, I decided to go with this fight, even if there were others that were maybe more exhilarating earlier in the season. What is truth? What is fiction? Begin. I want to know what side of the house you're playing. You and Christy have been playing both sides. Jackson, I did not tell you that. Tommy. No, 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 Jackson. That is a lie. Why would you Jackson, not take just me to second? To me. You're going to run a jury clean. Why would I not take you to second? Because yeah. nobody in this house could beat you. If I get a chance to take you out, I will. I'm just sick and tired so of you're this two-way. So you're not going to let me There's no two-way. It's right here. That's you it. You have been playing both sides. I'm not playing both sides. You're, I'm you're picking not. a side right now. I picked a side. Because you got caught trying to play both sides. No, I didn't. Oh, my God. I didn't, Jackson. Holly. You preach that you are your own person, and he is making this up and you're allowing it to happen. Tommy. This is a lie, and you need to stand up for yourself. Bring I her didn't say this. any of that. I didn't she wasn't say in any this of room. that. Own it. Own it. I am telling you, Jackson, mm. I would rather go out third place than take you with me to final two. I do not think that you deserve this money. I do not wow. think you deserve this money. That's my truth. I'm, I'm done talking. Well. Okay. Here's where things get weird. There's really only one fight in the entirety of Big Brother 22, and that's the personal game information fight between Christmas, Davon, and Bailey. Christmas was the HOH and she was targeting Bailey. Bailey had informed Christmas that she considered Davon to be her untouchable, someone who she would never ever go after in this game, which is basically a fancy way of saying that she was her unbreakable number one ally. So, with this information, Christmas decided to put Devon up on the block next to Bailey. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that this would upset the pair, but Christmas was seemingly annoyed and confused that Bailey was upset over the move. So, Devon was explaining why Bailey would feel this way. However, in this explanation, Devon said that Bailey telling Christmas about her untouchable was personal game information, to which Christmas retorted back saying that there's no such thing as personal game information, that's just game. The two argued about the semantics while Ian, for the second time this series, was stuck in the bathroom and had to awkwardly watch. Devon and Bailey tried explaining their reasonings calmly to Christmas, but Christmas clearly wasn't listening all that much and she became confrontational and aggressive with the both of them. Afterwards, Bailey and Devon opened up about their frustrations, where Christmas is allowed to act out and yell and it's fine, but the second that either one of them responds, they're labeled as crazy or as ghetto black women. This fight really highlighted the unfortunate reality of how societal expectations and racial stigmas can weigh heavily on the players and affect how they feel that they can play the game. Do you have any, like, untouchables? <laughs> you know mine. Christmas keeps saying, well, Bailey is upset, Bailey is upset. Yes, the girl is upset. You put her on the block. You don't get to dictate when it should be over or how she should feel. She's pissed, rightfully so. With her having an attitude with right now, confirms it. 
Yeah, because you nominated us. Okay, you are misinformed. This was game day Christmas. on. That was personal game information. It's th there's no such thing, she, personal game information. Said, That's called game. Bottom line, she trusted you. Well, she well, trusted you, and you took what she gave you, and you ran it and used it. There is personal game information. There's no That's such thing as personal, there game is personal game information. You betrayed because her. You guys are a duo. Christmas, I'm going to walk away. Good night. I'm, a, I'm not going to bed. Don't good night me, but I'm going to walk away. Well, have a good away. night. You telling me that Dave... Okay. Oh, sorry, hold That's on. Right. Let me... You're right. That's Man, talk about the worst possible time to need someone to give you a towel. Why does she get to talk to me like that? But if I respond, everybody's going to look at me crazy. They all going to be like, that's the Davon I was waiting for. That's what I wanted. I want to give no, you your space. Let me, tell you this. let me finish. No. You, you don't want to let me finish? And, and that's I what I'm not... You. I'm not going to let you do that. No, you. And get your fingers out of my you face. Back up and get your fingers you. out of my face. Stop with all of this. Oh. Do that to you. If I... I would be labeled as something crazy. Don't There's do that. There's a difference between game and personal. I if I did oh. that, I would Good be game, labeled Bailey. Good game. Game. Well, Stop clapping. Good game, Bailey. You did nothing. But I tried to calm her you down. You did nothing. If I was clapping in somebody's face, I'm a ghetto black girl. It's unfair. She does it. It's unfair. And she's fine. She's it's just unfair. upset. I'll handle it. Don't worry. Okay. Okay. I think you should go on the HOH one. No. Absolutely not. I can go wherever I want. Girl, shut up. Up. I don't have to. I live Shut here too. Up. Why are you you're adding fuel? You are, but you're you are. Stop. She's walking by. You see, she's upset. Don't add fuel to the fire. Oh, okay. I said nothing. No, to no, no. You. you wanted to provoke me. I'm provoked. provoked. Yeah, that's unnecessary. We don't have to be doing all of that. It is unnecessary. I just need my towel. Just like in Big Brother 22, there was really only one fight throughout the entirety of Big Brother 23, and this one was more of a shocker. Kylan was ride or die with Xavier and would have taken him to the final two, but Xavier was secretly not loyal to that. So after X won the final four HOH and Vito, he blindsided Kylan and took him out. Kylan did not see this coming. So just before he walked out the front door, he asked Xavier why. Xavier gave a generic, it's just the game type of answer, which is fair, but it seems like that answer wasn't sufficient enough for Kylan because Kylan kept pushing and eventually he brought up how Xavier wasn't being a good role model towards his nephew. This was a step too far, and you could tell that Kylan struck a nerve. At this point, Julie Chen was practically screaming at Kylan to leave the house, and he finally obliged, but it was one of the most tense live exits I've ever seen in the show, and it was the closest thing to a fight that happened all throughout Big Brother 23. I cast my vote to evict Kylan. Okay. Any reason? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The game. Uh-huh. You'll find out, okay. I just don't understand. I'm wondering, no heads up or anything from this guy. But, I mean, I kept you in the last week. How the game goes, Kyle. No, of course, no, no. I would have loved to give you a heads up, but I respect you too much as a player. Yeah, I mean, I thought the whole, you know, Kobe thing, raising him to be a man and face challengers and stuff. Are you talking about my nephew right now? I'm asking. I highly suggest you stop talking about my nephew. I think that that's not really this. up to me. Kylan. If your nephew has nobody to look up to. Keep talking can, about my nephew, guys. Kylan. 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 Julie's waiting on you. Kylan. Julie's waiting on you. Walk. Kylan, Kylan, yes, Kylan, I need you to leave right now. Thank you. Thank you. Up next, we have Big Brother 24, and even though the most explosive confrontation was definitely Daniel's gross beration of Taylor in week three, I don't want to talk about that. So instead, I have Daniel's little baby fit after Nicole was evicted at the end of week four. Daniel knew he was on the bottom, so he tried throwing whatever he could at Monty before the HOH comp, but to no real success. He really just looked like a whiner, and seeing Taylor sit on the sidelines while eating Lay's was awesome. I know it's not a very showy fight, but Big Brother 24 didn't have any crazy arguments, so this is what we get. Remember, you all can't split the check. Play for yourselves. Oh, I have to live with these people. I believed in you guys so much more, man. So much more hope for you guys. You're gonna win it. It's you or Michael. If you think that I was able to convince nine people to vote out one person, what Dude? conversation do we have? That you want to tailor out. You told me that. All right, bro. Job You're not right good now. at lying, dude. You're doing a great job right now. He can't even make up another lie. I don't think anyone's ever called him out in his life. Dude, I'm asking what happened. <laughs> it's just not worth talking about. You told the whole That's house, I got, manipulated dude. everybody. You could have had a one-on-one -on -one with me. We could have talked, I had my HOH room. Cause you have a Did mass alliance, dude. It's too late, bro. Like, see, okay. Genuinely, okay. you're doing this in front of the house. Because trying to what find are you hiding in this? What do you mean, what am I What are you hiding from? But what you're trying to do is trying to put exactly. more so attention on me hidden. because you're feeling no. emotional about your friend going home. You, no. you figured it out, you figured it out. Daniel is absolutely losing his mind. Believe what you want to believe. <laughs> you did a great job convincing the whole house that oh what they did God. was all up to me and I manipulated them to do it. I've been laying it all out, dude. I'm happy Daniel's not yelling at me right now. 
And now, lastly, we have made it to Big Brother 25. There have actually been quite a few standoffs throughout the season, but my favorite has got to be the Sari and Felicia argument. Jared was evicted during the double eviction, but he came back through the zombie twist. And right when he came back, he called out Felicia because he felt like she did him dirty. Felicia came back at him because she felt betrayed that they tried voting her out just the week before, which, to be fair, is very solid reasoning. Felicia began airing her frustrations to Sari, but Jared was Sari's son, so obviously she was going to go to bat for him. The two women then went back and forth for a while, and it was glorious. A good old-fashioned mother-off, as some may say. It wasn't the longest fight, but it was entertaining the whole way through, which is why I picked it. You did me filthy. You too, mama. Don't Jared, get me wrong. I don't want no conversation after. You guys played my ass last week. Both you guys me last week. Hold on. And how I is said, he gonna say I him? So he speak. voted against me last week and sent my I, ass home. So you gonna let me speak? What the vote No, was. ain't no growth. Well, my mama did. Listen, if you wanna do it like that and we get them together because it happened right here in this room. Before but when they, we, uh, hold but on, when they all decided on, they, everybody the was voting the only, against uh, you. Everybody was voting against him tonight. What did I do to you guys to make you want to send my ass I home? I got a whole list of stuff. The same way you couldn't switch them, how you expect us to switch them for you? Even when you approach me about your final two, I'm when just was that? To... Jared, I never you, said you, you that said to you. you. You don't remember that conversation outside Mama Felicia? Look at me now. Don't do that. Look at me you that I would have yeah, talked about. You did. Everything that I have ever said, I've told you guys, I've said. Everything. Please get off of your high horse and come down here with us peons and see the hypocrisy. And there we go. That is one or more fights from all 25 seasons of Big Brother. There are obviously a lot of great fights that I didn't end up choosing, but in a way, that's awesome. We were able to go over like 30 total fights and there's still more out there to watch. There are so many BB fight compilations out on YouTube that you can check out if you're itching to see more, but for now, I consider my discussion to be complete. Mostly because I'm exhausted and ready to talk about other things again. If you made it through all three parts and are still here, thank you. If you're not, well, that's okay too. I appreciate you all nonetheless. This was a really fun series to make and I'm glad I did it. Anyways, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. I of course need to give that extra special shout out to all of my YouTube members and patrons who wouldn't even need five minutes to think of a good one. They've always got a great retort locked and loaded. And as always, here's a clip for you on your way out. I would love your vote. And the reason I would like your vote is that before this, Rockstar came to me. She said, guess what? I'm gonna flip on this vote. I'm gonna make it a six to five. And then at that point in time, I'm gonna pin it on Caitlyn moving forward. Talk about that. Cause I haven't talked to you the entire time and you didn't campaign Stone toward it, me. Man. I cannot, I cannot on my daughter's birthday, believe that you would sit there and do some crap can't like that. Can't even own it. I, I disgusting. I haven't talked to you in three days. I, I cannot. Then don't. Disgusting. I can't believe on my daughter's birthday that you would drag my name through the mud like this. You are disgusting. So that's cute. That's real cute. That's cute. That's cute. Real cute. Okay, guys, it's Taco Tuesday. Guess what we're making? You're right, tacos. Yo. Yo, can you do me a favor and keep my name out your mouth? Do you want to go in the kitchen? You want to blow it up, blow it up, let's go. See, this is the thing, I'm honest about everything I've ever done and you're not. Manifest you're the truth, bro. Okay. So you're gonna continue to throw yep. HOHs. Yep. I'm throwing every HOH or Nick, so right. Who, who? I haven't thrown HOHs. Nick, that's a lie. Oh my God, no it's not, bro. You are my target because you're no one else's and I am still the biggest target and that's why I'm valuable. Congratulations, Thanks. happy Taco Tuesday. Thanks.